All right, welcome back to the golf podcast. So, so much to talk about here today, but one big thing that just hit in the news over the last couple of days here is Rory. So, you saw this comment, it's a little bit of a sound bite here. He calling wants to bring everyone together. Calling for compromise. He is. Uh, and and we've said this before, and we've talked a lot about the PGA Tour and Live, and it's like, can this go on forever? Plus, lingering and hanging over everyone's kind of heads is what Norman said recently about like they're looking for seven more players. So now like it's just constantly upping the ante and upping the heat between Mm -hmm. the two of like where everybody's going. But it was admittedly a little surprising to see it from Rory because Rory had been kind of the unofficial champion of the PGA tour. He had been like right out of the gate, out of the gate. Now we can kind of debate that in a second and how much of that was the the media building it up that Rory was the the big PGA tour guy. But Mm -hmm. yeah, but regardless, I'll, I'll read you this this quote from Rory, and then we'll kind of talk about what we think that means and what that would look like. Um, but what Rory said, he said, I believe there is no more time to waste. PGA Tour and Live will have to find a compromise and speak for the sake of our sport. And mm-hmm. what was beyond that and deeper belie- below that is what Rory was basically saying was like, unlike other leagues or like other things, like other sports, like soccer and stuff that can support multiple leagues. He's saying that by by fracturing and pulling it apart, you're going to hurt overall viewership because people want to see all the best golfers play together. Right. It's not going to be a situation where, you know, you want to you got watch half of the best golfers here and half of the best golfers over here. But I think what's most polarizing and bringing most people to this quote was just hearing Rory even say the word compromise, because even you think about with him and Tiger and what they're doing with this other kind of event series that they're looking to do and the backing that they have Mm -hmm. it looked like it was going to be a a no compromise you pick one side or the other so hearing it from rory i think the statement that he's making is something that's widely being said i think it's from hearing it from rory that was the the big news he's saying to do it but there's no solution yet no he hasn't offered one it sounds like he's now (laughs) throwing it back to jay like get it done like let's figure this out right and and i think Liv has been the ones who've been pushing the hardest to start saying like fine we'll talk we're not the ones who are anti pga tour it's the pga it, tour that's raising the walls by suspending players and things like that that's what live saying you know but also they have nothing to lose they're the new guy in town you know that yeah, whole right. type of thing but the question i have for you is like well two questions one do you think this sport could survive split and fractured with two different leagues and if not like, what is the solution? How do these two work, work together? Like, I don't how? I don't know if if there really is a solution. I feel like it's too late. Because this is what I'm thinking. These guys were offered a large sum of money to go and join Liv. They were dangled with the carrot. Some of them ate it and took it. Others ripped it up and threw it out. Now, I got to think guys like JT, Spieth, some, everyone got the, the invitation. And everyone got the number thrown at them. I'm sure. There's been no evidence of it. No one said anything of it, but I'm sure, right? You got. I would agree. say everyone got the invite. I don't think everyone got a big number thrown at them. I bet there were other big numbers thrown out to some other players that we don't know. For about. sure, but I don't think every PGA guy in the PGA Tour Correct. got a number at thrown Correct. out from Liv. But take another big guy. I'll take JT for example. This I'm just making this no up. Doubt. But maybe yeah. he got a large number thrown at him. Right? He passed on that. Yeah. That opportunity is gone. Hypothetically, let's say he's passed. Yes. Yeah. Because we don't know. We don't, don't know. Put but JT hypo- on the spot. We don't know. We don't know that. But hypothetically, right. let's just say he did pass. Um, that offer might be gone. And now if all of a sudden they marry together and everyone's allowed to play wherever they want, it's like, well, what happened to that money I was promised way right. back? So that's one thing. Where, where where do I get compensated for being loyal to the PGA Tour exactly. when everybody else went there? So maybe the compromise is like Jay just comes out and matches all the guys on the <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah, well, if everybody had the, the ability to write blank checks maybe but then this is my question like what is working together even look like because if let's say the pga tour says work our version of working together is we're going to remove suspensions so now it's up to the players where they want to play Mm -hmm. to me that becomes just a bidding war on a week-to-week basis of just which event which tour is going to have the biggest pot and then that's where all the guys are going to go play right and the other the other tour is going to be cannibalized for the week Yep. Unless they find some sort of way, working together means that they don't go in direct competition and they split the year, split the schedule in some sort of way. So 
you take these months, I'll take these months. But Liv has already said that they're moving to a February through September. So they're right in the heart of the PGA Tour schedule. But going back to what Rory was saying and like what some people have, and there's reading between the lines, this is some, what some fans have said, is that you take like a week, like a couple of weeks ago, you had Liv had the, the Jetta event, right? And that same mm. week you had the Bermuda Butterfield Championship on the PGA Tour. Right. And both of them had very low viewership numbers. So they're saying... And a golf on an overall, if by continue to fragment this way versus if all of golf came together and each week put on a banger yep. where all the best players are there, mm-hmm. I think the argument is being said that that would be the most eyeballs for golf rather than splitting these fields right. up and you've got 10 good guys playing over here and 10 good guys playing over here and, and we end up not watching it. Yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. I just honestly don't think it can ever... I don't see a good ending here. I just I, don't. I know. I, 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 I I'm trying to think how. It's gotten so deep. I don't see a very easy path to everyone getting out of this with, with no one getting hurt. Didn't something didn't something like this happen in the past, in like the 60s? With an alternate golf league? Nah, I, I mean, maybe. I mean, this would way predate my... <laughs> me. I mean, we could look it up. I'll but, look it up. But, but I think I, I saw something like Lee Trevino said that he went to a different league or something like that. I, I got to figure out. I, I mean, I, all I think about is like American football and like the XFL. Yeah, the XFL, that's XFL the comp, the, you know, it, where arena, XFL wanted to do things differently. That wasn't the Arena Football League, was it? Was XFL in the arena? I forget if they had the no out of bounds. It was just wild. It was Which like is insane. Golf. It just it walls. Insane. But <laughs> but again, like I mean, I'm trying to think of a way that everybody kind of gets out. Like if... Again, it, it, there would take a lot of backpedaling. Um, it, it would take a lot of that because, like, don't forget, a lot of this stance was taken based on the Saudi backing and all that type of stuff. So, I mean, there's a but, lot of hurdles to overcome. But I'm just saying, let's assume you do that. How? What does a world look like where these two tours coexist? I, I just... I can't see anyone from PGA being allowed or going over to live. I could see the opposite. Like, okay, Phil, we back off. You can come play in whatever event on the PGA Tour you want. We're done with that. You guys can come back and do whatever you want. But the guys on the PGA Tour, what are they going to do? Because live is live. Those guys are live guys. There's only like 35, 40, 50, 60 guys. Right. That's it. Right. Like, Spieth, you can't come. We're, we're filled. Sorry. Again, I mean, you guys, we always, like I said, we always leave the comments open on these because we want to let you guys, you know, weigh in and, and add to this conversation. So if you have a your own take of how you think that it could be structured that these two could work together these two tours and coexist and not cause this fragmentation and this fighting and this whatever it may be let us know all i can think is like going back to like er, like we talked about before ernie l's suggestion something to that effect where it was just like look pga tour you're going to be january through september right and then live is going to have a three-month series 12 events um it's going to be the same type of thing with whatever they want to add to it with and the that's team the whole live final. season that's what i'm saying like and then the guys are off for the nine months no oh. but okay. if all suspensions were removed let's yeah. say all suspensions were removed and a guy like cam smith could play the whole pga tour season and at the end of the season he goes and does live for the last three months and there's nobody gets hurt by it. Nobody's upset. You know what I mean? The PGA Tour doesn't suspend him or anything like that. It's just the guys who, again, going back to what you were saying, you have to you have to be in live. The, you know this. I think they're going to limit to sixty once 60. they have substitutes and stuff like that. Your motivation as a golfer will be to play as best as you can in order to get get on to live, mm-hmm. right? You want to be drafted into live, whether that be captains, team captains, yep. whatever. Or you want to have, you know, it's this way. It's not an open ticket to anyone. If you want that live signing money and you want that, you play as best as you can. And then it's almost like the pro ball for football, but right. extended. Right. So now at the end of the season, you're in on live. You go over and you play your live. PGA Tour folds up the tents for the year. Right. And then this way, too, because there's no infighting, you know, all the majors, the Ryder Cup, the President's Cup, all those still go on, and they both both are at the same table. Jay and Greg, can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine those two sitting across the table from each other. I can't after no. all this we've seen this year. Right. But they go in the, and they they take the schedule together, and they're like, "All right, yeah, and neither one of us is going to have an event on this week because right. this is going to be the Ryder Cup, and neither one. That's the only way I could see these two working together. But I think yeah. that that then becomes de incentivized for Liv because Liv is going to be like. 
I don't only want three months. Right. I want whatever. And the PGA Tour is going to say, well, we don't, we're the premier tour. We don't want to cut our season down to five months so that you can have more, right. which is why it's, this is all hypothetical. I don't see a way that these two work this out. I just, I think it's just going to continue like this. They're going to have their little three round weeks, 12 times a year. They're going to stick them in the odd weeks of the PGA Tour and just do their thing. And I don't think they're going to work together. I just don't think so. I think I think at most they'll let all the live guys come back for the majors just so the majors could be a little more robust. I just wonder, though, if there is a pressure button that forces them to work together. If and and now but that's again, the problem. There's just no at this point, so. I hate speculating because the fact that speculation has caused its own problems this year. With you know, we think a guy's going to go to live, and he doesn't. And it hurts. It hurts him in some way by just even the rumor mill. But right now, they're talking about Cantlay, Shawflay, all these names. When I ask if there's a pressure button, is if seven more guys before the end of this year, because that's when Liv's timeline, they want to pick up seven more guys before the end of the year, mm-hmm. at least is what's been said. If seven more big name or big and mediocre, middle of the road name PGA Tour players make the jump to live before December 31st, is that the pressure button? It's like, now we have to work together. We're losing depends so on much of our I think it depends field. on who they are. I'm saying, so there is, so in my mind, know. there is I, some sort of number that causes where the PGA Tour is like, I got it, I got it. I mean, if they lose like Spieth, Thomas, Scheffler, yeah, but more those, yeah. Just, well, at this point, it's like, all right, let's just get this right, thing if together. Ev- if <laughs> everybody on. went, like but, uh, like one big union. But right. if they lose seven top 50 players, I think that that is a failure for the PGA Tour. If all seven of those players are top 50 in the world, that's bad news. If seven more top 50 guys go, I think it, it's really, it's exactly what Rory is talking about in this quote. It's something of saying like, for the as he said, we have to find a way to compromise and speak for the sake of our sport. Because at that point, we're, we're just, it's becoming like a golf civil war. Yeah. They're so divided. And, and even part of what this is saying is like, he's saying we have to find a way to speak. Don't forget, these two don't even speak to each other. That's, yeah, that's true. They don't. They don't it, even it, talk. It's been be unilaterally like like you know Jay making all the rules and suspensions on the PGA Tour side, and Greg Norman just doing what he's doing. Yeah. It would be like you know like when there's kids and like like they'd be in room with like someone else next to them. He'd be like, "Tell him, you know, right, say, you know, right." <laughs> but he hears it. Yeah, but he hears it. <laughs> but look, I mean, there's no doubt that lines are starting to seriously be drawn because mm-hmm. you even had this week Greg Norman saying that. You know that that he's not going to be making big changes just for official world golf rankings. Mm. And if he doesn't That's make right. the changes, the official that line has been already drawn. Where 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 all the tours they've tried now have every tour out there they've mm-hmm. tried to approach, and they've all said, "Look, f- no cut events, fifty four holes. You know, it's it's it just fits the bill of exhibition. It it doesn't fit the bill for for official world golf rankings. So." At that point, does Liv just say, well, you know what? Then this is who we are. We're going to proceed without world golf rankings, and we're just going to try to make our as much interest in our league as we can based on that. Yeah. So, but I mean, like I said, I just don't see a huge path right now to what that compromise would be. But if you guys let us know in the comments if you think there's something that you think that can be done here and how these two can work together and in a way that it's – because at the end of the day, any compromise, it's going to require that that both of them get something out of the mm-hmm. deal. And I'll tell you something, man. There was an award for most successful disruptor of the year. It would go to Norman because everyone thought Liv was dead. Yeah. Dead in the water once Phil and all that stuff happened. And then look what, what, look what blossomed out of it. Well, I'll tell you what. If it taught us anything about where we're at from professional sports right now, it's that money talks. That's it. Because- Greg, yeah, you could say he did his type of thing, but without money and the kind of money that went through, none of this happens. Right. None of those guys who went made the jump over to live, they can say all that they want is for the less schedule or media rights or whatever it is. The reality is I don't think any of those guys take the risk that they took for their own personal career and the possibility of missing majors yep. and the possibility of missing – they did that without the the money that was thrown at them. I think that it was just like it became such silly money. It's like an offer you can't refuse That's it. type mm-hmm. of money. I think it just shows you that the award for disruptor, I think, goes to money. Yeah. It just shows, I yeah. think, that if, if somebody comes in there with enough turn your head 
money it's crazy a lot of things can be overlooked (laughs) yeah we kind of was shown and a lot and a lot of things can happen and 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 even established sports that have been the same way for a long time can be disrupted with the big with big money yeah no you're right yeah do we see more of this in other sports i don't know it's i mean i think arguably you kind of do you see it in in some sports like soccer and stuff like that but a lot remains to be seen anyway the other thing I wanted to mention here, shifting gears, we're going to dive Zach into... Zach had something, but what? Uh, sorry, yeah, I just Sorry, I just found that Lee Trevino quote, what yeah. he said. Um, he said, the lift thing is the same thing that uh, we did when we broke from the PGA of America in 1969. Uh, I didn't go. I stayed with the PGA, but other players broke away. I don't think it will affect anything. As long as Europe is politically and financially stable and the Saudis are stable, then this will be fine. Yeah. Interesting. What, what do you think was the best Trevino line ever in his life? You think it was the one iron, the one iron or Grizzly Adams did have a beard? <laughs> <laughs> the younger kids probably only know that. I think the most quoted one is definitely the one iron. Yeah. But anyway, Sorry. switching gears in a second, we're going to dive into some really great, like get your mind running hypotheticals. Some of the best. Hypotheticals. Oh, these are brain busters, man. These are brain busters. Oh. We, this is a, a conglomerate of ones we found scouring the web. Uh, Reddit and everywhere else. And Zach, did you make any of these up too, or were they all just found out there? Uh, I think they were all found. Okay. I think you made up a really good one that we're going to use. Okay. Yeah, so we've got some good hypotheticals to dig into, but the other big news story, speaking of majors, is uh, Jim Nance came out with an announcement that made everybody hold their breath for a second uh, because he says he's going to be retiring from commentating. But with a big asterisk, he said, big except, one. and you know what it is. And then mm-hmm. we all like took a sigh of relief when we said the Masters. Mm-hmm. So I guess for like the final four and things like that, he's going to start winding down. He's like got one more season. But a very interesting, the number that he said, um, he says he wants to make sure he's going to he's going to retire after he comments for the his 51st Masters, his 51st, his Masters. 51st, because what that will be, it would be the hundredth playing of the Masters. Oh, they're going to do an incredible like can you imagine him yeah i mean like it's gonna that, be like a tear jerk. that's gonna be a huge tear jerk. the hundredth masters and jim nance last one calling because jim nance do you think he'll say goodbye friends at the end of his speech oh my god did i just write a speech for you him just wrote his speech. he's probably gonna be like oh mike you he's, idiot mike you gave it away <laughs> well the good news is people will forget because it's 15 years 15 from years now. from now he's gonna give us 15 more he's 63 years old now 15 years that's gonna make him 78, 78 okay. years old um but his voice is so you know enmeshed in what we all come to know the masters mm-hmm. you know what i mean I, I think when you just think of like create like yeah, a, I mean, a, a mindscape of what the masters is i i picture azaleas and hear his voice right it's like growing up in new york with bob shepherd and the yankees right he announced games for he was 90 plus right but that was very localized for us new yorkers exactly right this is this more is, now yeah of course i mean so he'll have he'll have called the man you know have announced for the masters for 50 um one times he uh this is a kind of a funny one he was 26 years old when he called his first masters in 1986 jim nance 26 26, 26 years old when he called his first masters wow so that's incredible. That math doesn't add up, but that's all right. I'll, I'll leave you to that. Well, no, 26 in 1986. He's got to do 15. So, so I mean, how many years ago was 1986? Well, I was born in 82. So there it was like 30 something years ago. So that's 30 years. And it makes him 63, 63. Yeah. He's you got it. Nailed it. Years old. The math actually does it did work. work. It Believe did it or quite not. well. <laughs> <laughs> it worked pretty well. You know, it's interesting how math works, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to keep sipping that coffee, yep. and then we're going to, yeah. So speaking of which, by the but way. But who's going to take over for Nance? Faldo's out. We're talking, so so weekly tournaments starting, what, this year, Nance is out? Or when is he actually retiring? What was the date? Well, as far, from, from He announced Masters? retirement from announcing golf, is what you're saying, but he's just going to only do the Masters for the next 15 years. So when is he out? Did they say when? Uh, let's see. Because Faldo just retired, so I'm like, who, like, who could they bring into golf to make it fun behind the microphone? Who do you think? I don't know. It's I feel like it question. needs a good voice. Bob. Bob who? Bobby Berger. Bob does sports. You think so? <laughs> Is the next Jim Nance? Can you imagine? I think, honestly, we. Think I mean, you he, want ratings to go up. Like, we think he's all funny and all that, but I think he could get serious, and by then, a lot of people will know who he is, and I think he'll bring a 
much different demographic to the golf game. Yeah, he well, could. I, I personally think they're going to go the safe route. They they're need gonna to go with some sort. It, you know, what I think of it is like uh, New Year's Eve. It used to be uh, Dick Clark. Right? Dick Clark. And it was like, this is like the closest thing to that because like it was Dick right. Clark. Clark. He put his name. Who's on the it. closest thing? Seacrest. And then they brought in Seacrest because he's just like so who's the he's next the announcer yeah. guy. You know the pro. Yeah, they're bringing the next pro, but, but they can't bring in a Romo. Like they can't have. No. That's what I mean. Like don't bring in a Joe Buck type of guy. Don't bring in anyone that's going to anger people because the PGA Tour is in a rough spot right now. I think Jay Monahan's well, going to go. Not we, the tour. It's the it's a we're talking about the, the Masters. A, I'm saying for on the 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 some of the, Nance doesn't just do the Masters. Okay, and that's what I'm saying. Pebble act, Beach, right? Okay, I believe he is staying on doing golf. He okay. is just retiring from the final four of college basketball. Ah, so okay. And All unfortunately, right. the article I have in front of me doesn't specify All right. his decision. So we got Nance in golf, at least. Events. We yeah. need Nance in golf. You need Nance. That's all. Sorry. We right. need him. It's just part of, especially, like, especially when I say for, think for the Masters. But anyway, um, speaking of that 86 and your mention of earlier, happy birthday this past weekend, by the way. Thank you. Big 4-0, baby. Big 4-0. Celebrated with a little range work. I went to the range. Oh, it was tranquil. Am I slouching again, Zach? No, I'm in a good spot, right? Um, at some but, point, he'll just be laying down. At some point. It's, yeah, go to my camera, ready? <laughs> You're just going to be laying <laughs> down. Okay, sorry. So... Um, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to the range. No questions. It's my birthday. hundred balls. I didn't make it nearly halfway through them. I left a whole bucket out there, but are you, I, are you serious? I left a lot, maybe 40. I gave him to the guy next to me. He was, was that just an like, attention span thing? Or were you tired? Uh, I was tired and I, I had like 12 minutes to go to pick my daughter up. Okay. So, so I had so even, hustle. even on your birthday, you were on the clock. I still was on the clock, still on the clock, you know? But uh, no, I had a really good focus range session. It was nice to be out there. And yeah, it was a cool weekend. Thanks, man. Had fun. Yeah, you got good the per perfect weather for it. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, talking just, about uh, giving guys your balls after you're done at the range. Uh, we were at Darlington on Friday <laughs> and we had a little snafu with the video. So I had bought 200 balls at the range and we didn't use, we used maybe 15 of them yeah and we had to move to a different location so the guy that was next to us he hadn't even bought balls yet and he was like are you guys just leaving all of these yeah. like can i take these he's like yeah i'm like yeah you're you good, just man. made that guy Gave him a cool, cool, day, like cool 175 balls but yeah. i'll be honest with you a little range tip you don't need to buy balls go down the range start warming up guarantee go right around midday on a weekend guys buy a full bucket and they hit two before they go out they leave the rest all the time. Get out of here. You're well, just a range you scavenger. You're just like, hey, you want those? I'll be like, yeah, I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your trick to get free uh, free golf balls at the range. Uh, Mike, the local range scavenger. I've been banned from all the local. I feel golf like they courses. could put together a whole like like whole like bio piece on you, like yeah. the range scavenger. The range scavenger. That's so funny. You know, never paid for a ball. And, never yeah. paid for a ball. Anyway, let's do this. Let's do a quick before we completely lose him. And he's laying down over there. Let's do a quick <laughs> word from our sponsor. And then I come back with these hypotheticals. Because this is going to wake your brain up. We got some some real soul searchers. For One of golfers. them blew my mind hard. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know how if I can answer it. That but. we're going to dig into. So let's do a quick word from our sponsors and we'll jump into it. All right. The hours have been put in. The work has been done. And as the moment approaches, you either fear it or you feel it. For Titleist, it's a moment filled with pure anticipation. The culmination of a relentless pursuit of speed in every form. So step up and settle in with confidence. The Titleist TSR is here. The new TSR drivers take everything that makes the TSI the number one driver on tour and pack even more performance into every head. From new face technologies to CG improvements and aerodynamic refinements, when everything moves the needles, you're playing at Titleist. Titleist speed. So go to Titleist.com to learn more about the TSR medals and schedule your fitting today. It's Titleist TSR. Find your faster. And big thanks to FootJoy. They just released their Thermo series, which is the most advanced apparel layering system ever. It features layering items designed specifically for golf, uh, and it allows you to play in all weather conditions. So now we're going into November. It's like 85 million degrees today in November. Right. It's incredible. But this weekend, it's going to be 40. Mm -hmm. So it's going to change like that. So let me tell you about the Thermo series collection. There's there's base layers, mid layers, outer layers, and they even have pants, which is great. They have the new Thermo Series pants. Uh, they're made with materials that move with the golfer without any restriction. They're lightweight to reduce bulk, and they're temperature regulated to ensure maximum comfort no matter how many layers you're wearing. So you start off with a lot. You could start removing them throughout the round. Just make sure that you have the right gear for this 
cold season coming up. And you can check out the entire line of Thermo Series. Just visit footjoy.com. All right, back at it. And, and Zach, you were teasing us with a little hypothetical of your own before we dig into these. Yeah, I thought of an interesting one. We were just talking about Jim Nance. And yeah. so at that 100th Masters, would you rather be on location to see the 100th playing of the Masters or would you rather be at home listening to Jim Nance call the Masters Easy one. for a final time? Easy one out of the gate. I'd rather be there because, yeah. A, I'd rather just be there if Nance wasn't there. But... I think being there, witnesses would be great. We can always go home, tape it, Tebow. Oh, DVR, right. I mean, you're gonna forever hear the calls from his. You'll final forever masters. hear it. Yeah, you're gonna hear replays. But I will tell you what, that's its own separate conversation. Imagine what the tickets are gonna be like for the hundredth. Yep. And 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 if you get that lottery that year, forget it. You think Tiger will play in it? How old is Tiger? Forty six, forty eight, one of those two. Uh, forty six. I believe Tiger's forty six. So and so he'd be sixty one, which Bernhard Langer is like sixty five. He's still playing in him. Listen, I, I mean, he could do he like could a, we saw like Jack and Arnie for their finals in some of the big majors. Imagine that was like Tiger. Also, Tiger's farewell. Like imagine could if be Tiger, Tiger's farewell. Tiger was like, this is the last Masters I'm playing in. Right. Imagine that it's the hundredth. I mean, forget about it. You can name any price for those tickets. And that's the year Charlie wins. Yeah. Right. right. Can right. you imagine that? And by the way, who who's going to hit all the inaugural tee shots? Because you know by then, Player will be a deceased. He's 90, I mean, right? It's 15 years from 90? now. He's 90? Isn't he? He's 90. <laughs> <laughs> we lost that. <laughs> because, well, you almost lost me because you just wrote off Gary Player. <laughs> hey, this is a tough show for Mike. This is a tough show. This is a tough one. <laughs> the guy just... <laughs> <laughs> Here's a guy, Gary Player. We've had him here on the show. You just wrote him off. You're like, well, Gary won't be around. <laughs> He's probably healthier than you. <laughs> Gary's probably somewhere saying, like, well, Mike won't be around for the for that one. <laughs> Guy's in better shape than you. Isn't he, is he 90, though? I'm just doing the basic math. 15, what, 105 isn't really common. You know, I'm <laughs> Yes, he probably Listen, is healthier than Gary. Me. If anyone could do it, we know it's you, buddy. <laughs> he's eighty-seven. He's eighty-seven. Gary okay. will be there. So <laughs> <laughs> he's like, <laughs> well, who won't be there? Uh, Gary will be. Gary will be there, Mike. You won't. <laughs> I struck him off the guest list. Oh, I can't. Okay, so well, if we if we're not officially canceled after that, <laughs> I, we'll guys, move on. I, was, I was doing basic math, and, that, <laughs> and and with that, we'll never have Gary Player back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's, we'll let's reel it in uh let's go back to our hypotheticals so yeah, pull it back no but but, but honestly back. i mean we had a little fun with that but th can you imagine if those things lined up the hundred masters the last jim nance masters tiger makes it his farewell masters <laughs> I think it's, Hold on a second. You guys got to <laughs> give me one second. You might need to just walk away from the yeah, booth and come back. <laughs> Frank's going to keep going with the show. <laughs> this is also Mike's retirement from the podcast today, in case you guys didn't know. Guy turns 40 over the weekend. He can't keep it together anymore. Um, okay. I, think, I think the best right, thing we can do for everyone at this point is just move on. So, yes, please. Zach, hit us with the first hypothetical. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so first one, keep it a little topical for the weather currently. Would you rather play in a hundred degree heat or thirty two degree cold? <sighs> That's heat, a, <laughs> right out the bat. Yeah, right. Because I don't do well in cold. Like I know you can bundle up and, and layer, but I don't. I don't mind the heat. I don't like being cold. Yeah, I have very because my hands are cold. I'm blown. You know what I mean? Like I can't hold. It's just a whole different experience, cold golf. I'm with you. And like I would even say if, let's say, you were fully prepared for mm. it, right, and you had all the stuff you needed, right. the layers, all that type of stuff, I still got to go the heat mm. because at the end of the day, like it even affects how you play the game. Like we, we know from firsthand experience going out there and playing in the cold, when you start to get frozen ground, yeah, golf balls that feel like rocks – you know what I mean? Like maybe not even at 32. We've played colder than that, believe we've it or not. We've played colder than that. When it starts to really dip, we've had it where you hit the green and it just bounces off it like it was, like it was, at, you know, uh, what do you call it? Asphalt. Yep. It's just like, I think at a, at 
32 freezing and below the game starts to dip into being unplayable mm -hmm. and it's more so you go out there just to have fun just to have fun because i mean to think take about it like this it's here in the northeast and where we're at you can't even enter a score for your handicap after a certain month yeah because it's like it's not golf at that point there's no like limp upper limit on it's too hot today i can't enter my score for a handicap Right. Like at that point, you just may be a little uncomfortable. You throw a little water on yeah, your head. Yeah, it just but might be the golf ball performs the same. The the the, yeah. the ground might be like a little dried out, but it's mm -hmm. going to perform the same. When you start to get into freezing weather, it starts to change the way the game is actually played. Totally. And and by the way, a frozen ground and my steep swing are not good for my wrist. And I, I'm not making a joke. It's just not, it's like when I play indoor golf. Like when you're steep and you're just banging into the ground like that, yeah, you feel it. I feel it hard. And it just right, frozen pain shoots ground up my makes, arm. makes a huge. Difference. So, and and guy, the, by the way, we're talking about uh, the best golf hypotheticals here to really get your brain moving and weigh in by all means in the comments. Yeah, we got some bangers coming. We want, up, so. We're going to give you our take on each one of these, but we want to hear your take. So just uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, just maybe timestamp it and let us know what your take is on each one. So the first one was 32 degrees or 100 degrees. Which one would you rather play in? We're both going 100 degrees. Both going 100. With the caveat of saying, we'll play in either one. Yeah, anyone. No doubt What do you about got, it. Zach? What else you got, Zach? All right, so the next one is, would you rather get to play Augusta once or get Saturday, Sunday tickets to the Masters for life? Wow. Ooh. Those are some coveted tickets. And it goes back to what we were saying before. That means you're going to have tickets in 15 years for the 100th. That means you can go to every Masters on the weekend for the rest of your life. Or just be there play. for all the big Masters moments or play it. And I'm assuming that means on the other side of that, you play it. It means you never get the tickets. <laughs> you can't, get, yeah. can't dip in both pots here. I'm going to go with the tickets for life because it's something that I could look forward to every year. Maybe it's bring a different person or something. Or I don't, is it just, Am cool. I just getting the ticket? I don't know. Oh, well, let's give you two tickets. Give me two tickets. Yeah, bring a different person. Then it's like it's part of the schedule. Like can't wait for Augusta this year. Can't wait for this year. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'd say I'm the other side of it though. I'd play it. I'd play it because I just I enjoy, I I would no doubt love the experience to go and watch it firsthand. It's a but hard the, one. The I don't think anyone nails the broadcast better. Any event other than the Masters, the, the Masters. Masters does it better than anyone yeah. else. I would have no problem having played it and then watch that from the comfort of my house every every year. Just knowing and being able to put myself in those positions that I've played yeah. the course. It's a good one. And been there. And that was like a 70-30 for me. The hot was like a 99-1. That was like a 70-30. There's going to be some 55-45s coming up. I got a feeling. Listen, in general speaking, like I, I'm, I'm for certain vibes, like Ryder Cups and big events, there's nothing that kind of like beats being there. But that said, I'm not. At a huge be there mm. at the event guy like I, I i feel like i can see more from home yeah i know that it sounds like it may sound like a little bit yeah. like lazy but the reality is golf unlike baseball football where you're seeing all the action you got to be very picky about where you want to be to make sure you're seeing which oh, yeah. players you want to see yeah. yeah right yeah. it's not like you a can turn up walking. on 18 or whatever and just watch that hole but there's something to be said for watching the broadcast at home and getting to see everything yeah well, it was a tough one yeah, that was a tough one. Wait, by the way, Zach, before you go on, is it is it too early for the Red Cups? Are they gonna start doing these in like an October Starbucks? I think like, Duncan was pulling that stuff out before Halloween. I saw. They I just realized like it's Christmas November. Stuff. Like I know eighth, seventh. All right, right. got to get the use out of them. All right, sorry. Go ahead, Zach. Next. All right, one. what else you got? Would you rather have an ugly par or a pretty bogey? Mm. Ooh, when you say ugly par. Like he duffed one off the tee and he like hit one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up and down. And you just, hole out from like 110. Or like hole out for but bogey. But to me, that, that's that's what makes a bogey pretty would be like a long hole out. Like you have one memorable shot on the hole. Yeah. To like an ugly par. I, I guess the way you would say an ugly par might be like a lucky par. It's a lucky par. Like that shouldn't have happened. Like this would be an ugly par for me. Uh, a par three, you hit it to like five feet and you two putt. Right, and you're like, oh, that was ugly. Right, but I missed that birdie, but I got, I got my par. Now, most people are going to say, listen, what's on the scorecard is the most important thing. But on the other side of that would be a bogey. Let's say it's a par four, and you you make a mess of it, but you hole out from a hundred yards away for four. Right, I mean for five. Yeah, you'd be like, it was a disaster to get there, but then you're like, hey, I I saved my bogey with this hundred yard hole out. I think yeah, for the sensation, I think you go with the bogey, right? Because of, you <laughs> just know, don't make a like, habit of it. Yeah, don't right? make a habit of because otherwise the scorecard's not going to be yeah. right. 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 I guess it really does come down to the unique situation in the shot. 
That's the. I mean, that's the the, the cop out. So way when to Freddie Couples at Sawgrass and the players seventeenth hole put in the water and then he reteed hitting three and made a hole in one. Right. What was that a pretty the, par? A pretty par. That was <laughs> okay. a pretty par. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We'll take that. All right. Next one. Pretty easy. <laughs> But I think a lot of people will be interested in hearing this one. Are you guys rather walking or riding? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. I'm going to tell you, for me, it depends dramatically on the course. There are certain courses Big time. that are very walkable. I want to experience the walk. I'm thinking back at some of our favorite courses, like when we played Whistling Straits, right? When yeah. we played, When I played the Ocean Course, when we played the Old Course, I would have... I think we would have lost something to be in carts and just to be zipping by. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, to be I, able to walk that and experience every inch of those courses, that was something I wouldn't give up for anything. And, and I'm glad they make you walk. Yeah, that's a good for that point. reason. But then there are some courses we play them often, like around here with crazy elevation and stuff mm. when you just know it would walking them would be so difficult. There's some courses by us that won't even let you walk. Because it's long drives from hole to hole. I would be I was, so worn out trying to walk them that I wouldn't be having any fun. Could you imagine walking Patriot Hills? That's what I mean. Like, if oh you walk God. Patriot Hills, forget it. Like, I'd be so dragging by 18, I wouldn't even be having, enjoying myself. You won't, you won't enjoy the round. And I think, I think the best case of that, the best taste of that was the day we played Pinehurst number two and then Tobacco Road because we walked the flat Pinehurst. We got the tour experience with the caddy. Yep. And then we were tired. We went over to Tobacco Road. And if we had to walk that, you probably would not have felt the way you feel about Tobacco no. Road. No. We would have been miserable by like the 14th hole. Golf City might not have been a company if we had to I walk agree. Tobacco walk, Road. But right. listen, not to say we haven't walked 36 before. We did we a have, lot when we went to Scotland. Sure Scotland. did, yep. But I think there are certain courses that are designed to be very walkable. I, I would even put Whistling Straits <laughs> not in the most walkable category because yeah. the way it's they said, they said it was like seven Eight, miles to yeah, walk. Yeah. You mm -hmm. go out and back and out. And back, but there's no crazy elevation. But if you're just playing that 18, there's certain courses I just want to put my feet on the ground. I want to feel the course. Yeah, I I'm right walk there with it. you. Um, yeah, it so it really it, depends. But I would say apples to apples comparison. If I've got the time and the, the course is physically walkable, I'd rather walk, walk it. Sure. I, I just I feel like I stay looser, yep. you know, and I just play better when I walk. Yep. Yeah. All right. Next one. So if you are running late to your round and you only have time for to do one of these pre-round what are you doing going to the driving range or the putting green <laughs> that's a good this is one i want to hear you guys comment yeah. on driving range or putting green drop it in the comments what do wow, you got dude. mike i typically go to the range it's what i typically do and i probably should go to the putting green so i mean i'm a range guy it's never the right thing I when i get to the greens i'm like shoot right yep and i think it depends on what the what the real kind of goal for the day is if the goal is to score better then i you think you gotta putt yeah yeah you gotta putt because you can loosen up on the tee box you could you do could. some stretches take a couple swings but there's other times like sometimes the goal is just going out there and having fun and i'd really rather have a loosened up swing and i'm not terribly worried about what i'm going to put on the scorecard that day and right. I'll, I'll get used to the greens as i'm out there but sometimes i just i don't want to go to the first tee totally cold yeah but i think the smarter move if you're looking to score is is go roll some putts get a feel for the greens because I feel like from the core standpoint, that's what changes the most day to day. Yeah, I and agree. Being able to get that I feel agree. for it mm -hmm. and get get that speed down. I mean, it's why like PGA Tour players is like, well, the first and last thing they do is roll some putts yeah. before they go out. So, tells you something. Yeah, I like it. All right, what, would you rather attend the Masters or the Ryder Cup if you <laughs> had to choose between one or the other? Wow. Oh man. There's what experience are you looking for? Huh? Are you right. looking for a party or are you looking to go to a black tie affair? <sighs> right? I know. Like you think it, it, it depends. Like, is the Ryder Cup on your home soil? Are you travel? You know what I mean? Well, let's put th this year, uh, 23. Let's use as an example. In Rome. You get to go to Italy and go to Rome and go. They built the course for the Ryder Cup. I mean, yeah. it's, it's all about it. Or go to Augusta this April. <sighs> I, the, the good news is you're not losing either way. I know. They're both going to be events that I you know. talk about for the rest of your life. I mean, I'm thinking about like some of the the marquee Ryder Cups that people still talk about, like the war on the shore and things like that. Being able to say like you were there. Mm -hmm. I was there for the war on the shore. But then again, just being able to say I was there. You never know what might happen. A couple of years ago, Tiger came back and won the Masters. Right. Oh, man. I, I know. It's a, almost a 
coin. It's a co- that's a coin flip because they're both both things like, that we've not done and both are bucket list things for us. Being a hundred percent Italian background heritage, I'd go. I tilt the scale for next year to go to Italy yeah. for the Ryder Cup. But you know what would tip the scale for me? Ryder Cup back at the Ocean Course. Yep, I know you would love that. I'm such a big fanboy of the Ocean Course. Aren't they doing course. that again? I'm sure it'll make. I, it's I don't know the, if, it's, if it's on the schedule. I think it's even it on the schedule. It could be because they schedule things out like yeah. a decade. That's right. But being there on the Ocean Course for the Ryder Cup. That yeah. would that would rival the Masters for me, but beyond that, it's it's tough to rival the Masters. Okay, all right. So, kind of an easy one here. Would you at the turn rather a burger or a dog? <laughs> the old burger the old dog. burger or dog. It depends. If I want the round to go downhill fast, I go burger heavy. Yeah, because if I'm starving, I'm gonna reach for the burger, but then the burger's gonna it's just gonna, like sit gonna in there. weigh you down, right? Yeah. I feel like the dog is just like it's, it's built a little, for the turn. It's built for the turn. It's yeah. like that one you got that thing down before you even hit the yeah, tee. It's done. You're good to go. And the burger, out. I feel like it sits on the seat. You keep coming. You like, keep not coming back just to on it. the seat. But right. You know what I mean? Like you just keep coming back <laughs> straight on the seat. <laughs> like, I played with this guy the other day. He just kept on his burger like on the seat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway you'd be like in the foil no 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 just on, on the seat, seat. No. yeah but anyway you just keep coming back get a couple bites i don't know unless unless somebody comes at me like a, like you're playing with me like yo i play here all the time the, the burgers are like you can't miss you can't miss them i know then i i if i go with a home game like recommendation i'll trust you and i'll go on that uh-huh. recommendation did Otherwise, you get a burger at mansion ridge the other day at the turn didn't you go burger in the shop or something uh i might you uh, went with a full meal <laughs> I, I got two dogs. The guy had a one steak. Day. Oh, one day you got two dogs. Yeah. That was a big mistake. Dude, right? When I was it a was kid, I could put hot mistake. dogs down. Yeah, that was like nothing. Hot dogs were nothing. I still remember we had a thing called Play Ball Baseball Patriot camp. Hills is where you had the hot dogs. Yeah. Where we'd win baseball camp and, and we would play. You'd play two games every day plus mm. drills. We'd be playing baseball right. all day, right? And in the morning, and I, I'm talking about like I was probably like 12 years old. There was the the ballpark, you know, the, the thick, fat ones, fat yeah. hot dogs, but they're boiled. Like mm-hmm. they had one big thing. They made probably about two hundred hot dogs that day. Right. And in the morning before you went out, the first thing you had to do, you had to put in your order for how many hot dogs you're having that day. And was it was it unlimited. unlimited. Get out of town. It was unlimited. And I had some days I dipped into the four. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'll be like, yeah, and they'd back be like, then it was like, like, yeah, four. But like when you're 12 years old, sure. running around playing baseball yep. all day, you could eat four yeah, hot dogs, no of course, problem. You're burning 11,000 calories. Yeah, didn't even slow you didn't down. Didn't slow you down. Nowadays, if I eat four hot dogs, that's it. Just like I'd like to see your tenth hole after four at the turn. Four hot dogs. I wouldn't make it. No, I'd make it to 11. Maybe it'd be done. <laughs> all right, what's next? <laughs> yeah, we agree on hot dog. Moving on. All right, so you go out two days the first day you shoot an 80 and the second day you shoot a 100 or hmm. you go out two days and shoot 90 both days oh and then listen this one for you guys out there listen can be adapted so whether you're you know if you're shooting usually in the 70s or just right. picture it's either shoot your best one your like, best round one day and your worst round the next or or a bad round the next or just two hmm. mediocre nothing special rounds which one do you want? Wow, it's a tough one because like everybody wants to shoot their like one of their best rounds. I would I would die to shoot an eighty. I would love I would to love sh- it. I'd love to shoot an eighty, and I wouldn't mind the hundred because I don't know. Maybe I'll learn something from the hundred. I don't know. I feel I like a hundred would be such a kick. It would be such a kick. It, it would, would be, be a miserable day, especially if like if you're just coming off a great round and you're thinking like I yeah. got it figured out. That's the you old know? mind like, mess right it. there. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a, it's a way golf will mess with your mind. Do you take do you take the just consistency to a two nineties or two eighty nines, like or something, right? Two like blah rounds versus a, had your a share great pars, round, but then and... whatever the great round is defined of for you and your scoring level, a great round, and then just be immediately humbled the next day with a terrible round. That's a tough one, right? For me, since my best ever was seventy nine, I'd say if you're asking me, seventy eight, Mike, followed by a ninety eight the, the next, next day, day. <laughs> I'd be like, oh god. I would lose all hope in the game. I'd be like, "What happened?" I think I get with it. I think I'd have to take the optimistic route, and I would have to just take the better round and just use that as my, my mindset would be just to forget the other one. the uh, The bad round was an anomaly. Instead of yeah. saying the bad round erases the good round, mm-hmm. I would rather take the good round. Tell myself like this yeah, is the confidence builder. That's what I'm capable of, and I'll just say I had a bad day. The it'd other be a day. tough thing to get over because. 
you'll have to figure out why everything went wrong after everything it went, went so well. Right. Immediately. I think that there, <laughs> no matter where you're at in golf, there are certain rounds that we all have that you just have to be like, there doesn't have to be a deeper reason. I just had a bad, I just day. Had a bad day. I played terrible, and I'm just going to forget it and move on. I would go that route. Okay. I like it. I think I'm yeah. with you there. Yeah. I think I'm like, I'm like, yep. All right. Last one here. But would you rather shoot your best round ever or your worst round ever, but you get a hole in one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone that wants that coveted hole in one, especially you and I, we've never had We've one. never had one. We've both come so close. It's going to happen on the channel one day. I know it. But then, too, it's tied to your hole in one story that this terrible round because like, you know everyone wants to hear the story because you're gonna have to show the scorecard you know you're gonna have to show that scorecard meanwhile nobody wants to hear the story of your best round ever i was like no. keep it to yourself buddy like i'm struggling out here yeah yeah <laughs> but you, you know you, you get, have to you, you have to be prepared to show the scorecard that has the sevens and eights and that one right. with the circles around it uh-huh if you want to go that route that's all I got to say. And I think I do go that route because I never had one. I think so, too. I think it's so. the fact of never having one. I'll, t- I'll take it all day. I'll take the, I'll take a terrible round. I'll struggle through it. And I'll just be able to say, that's golf, man. That's golf that's for you. That's golf. And that, I, honestly, a lot of times when I am having a bad round, that's what gets me through. Yeah. It's just knowing, like, just keep going because you never know what might happen. Right. You could be on track. Just like, it's just terrible yeah. triple bogey train mm-hmm. but then you could step up to that part three and, and hole one and i think you forget about all those bad shots real quick uh, i think so i mean and i think for if you ask this question to people who've had hole in ones they might go the other route yeah. i've had one it's great but they know that experience maybe i get the best feeling in the world and i'll take it or again. that who you're knows? right so yeah. that's where we're gonna leave it to you guys to weigh in in the comments but, and let us know which one it is and then zach we had one other one from youtube right we put out there let me i could yep let me pull that up. We put that out on our, our main channel, Golf City channel, on the uh, on the community tab. And the question was, would you rather play golf with Tiger Woods at a terrible, like, two-star rated Muni golf course or play Augusta National by yourself? And the answers was 18 with Tiger. 59% went that route. 41% selected Peace, Silence, and Amen Corner. Amen, yeah. So there was 4,600 votes, and some of the comments were interesting. I'll just rattle some, and then I'll ask you what you'd say. Um, there was one main one here right on top. The only way you could change this to make it more difficult choice by saying chill with Tiger at his home and play in his backyard. Oh, they're really inviting themselves to yeah, the home Yeah, you know what I mean? Point. One other guy said here, um, Augusta all day long. Play golf is more important to me than meeting pro players. So it's going to be a personal preference well, thing, too. There's pro players, and then there's Tiger Woods. Of course. Tiger is arguably the greatest of all time. Yeah. And he's won there so many five times. No, not not Augusta, but he's just he's Tiger is Tiger. Augusta is Augusta. What do you pick? I'm Tiger all day. Yeah, because Same. at the end of the day, like I'm always I, I I love course like certain courses. I put them on my bucket list. It would mean a lot to me to play certain courses. But golf to me has always been about like the company and who you're playing with. Yeah, and I, I honestly I'd I'd rather have a around and and be able to like talk to tiger get to know tiger tiger is a big reason why most of us play golf most of us are our age i would say arguably got into Mm -hmm. golf because we got interested in it during the height of tiger's career you know i to me it's just a more memorable experience to get out there and play 18 holes anywhere i don't care where it is yeah i'm I'm with you yeah just think of the stories think of the stuff he's saying to you right you know what you might witness you never know what he might do out there right i'll play rockland lake executive par three course right just yeah, a play with Tiger that day at three hole in ones on a par three course. Yeah, could you imagine <laughs> him being like, "All right, Mike, I'm going to spin this thing back on a string now. Let's go." And I'm like, I would just be amazed all day, right? And I would just challenge him on all different things all day. Hit a stinger, hit a low cut, hit a high draw, do all this stuff. It yeah. would be a great day. It it doesn't would, matter where we are. No, it'd be incredible. Cow pasture. Let's play. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> mini golf. That's what we really do. Like, yeah, would you do 18 holes of mini golf with Tiger Woods? Definitely. We'll play a pop stroke with him. Mm-hmm. There you go. He'd be in his, mm-hmm. his backyard, so to speak. <laughs> anyway, that's everything we have for you guys this week. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, the comments are open. Weigh in. Let us know about everything we talked about here, everything from your opinions about how PGA Tour and Live could work together to some of these hypotheticals. We want to hear from you guys, so make sure you drop your comments below. And we'll see you again next week. And I love you, Gary player. <laughs>